Welcome to another edition of the ISB podcast. I'm your host, Sahil, here with Rahi on another day of the European Championships. This was, of course, the knockout matches. I shouldn't say knockout. It's the last round of matches for the group stage of Group B. And football can be a very cruel game sometimes, Rahi. I mean, you know, as as you can tell viewers out there, Rahi's, of course, been a strong supporter of the Croatian national team for many years. Uh, I actually ended up watching this match at a Croatian church, uh, you know, and I can tell you it uh, wasn't a pretty sight at the end of this match. No, it's it's just heartbreaking, to be honest. There's been some results in this tournament. There's been some games. There's been some late goals. But this one takes the cake. This is heartbreak. And this is how you watch the game, but also why sometimes you don't want to keep watching the game because as a Croatia supporter, it doesn't get much more gut-wrenching than this. This tugs at your heartstrings just completely. I mean, the way it happened and for Luca to score the goal after missing the penalty and then you lose control and then you gain control back and it looked comfortable and then the way that last goal happened, it's just, I don't know what to say except heartbreak. It, it was it was just so it was just so Italian in a way, and this is like you know Italy used to do this quite often prior, right? And then we haven't seen this from the Italy team recently. And you know what's funny is you you go through these moments when you're a little bit younger and you think, oh, every, everything's always against me and that kind of thing. And I'm sure Croatian supporters feel that at this moment. But, you know, Croatia has also had a lot of luck on their side, you know, recently, especially like, you know, winning in penalties numerous times in the, and most recently against Brazil in the, uh, in the World Cup. Yeah, this takes me back to 2008, the Euros. It yeah. reminds me of a game when Luka Modric just started playing. So this might be the bookends to his Euro career. They were yeah. up against Turkey and losing an incredibly late, late, late goal to tie it, ultimately losing in penalties. That was the saddest day as a Croatian fan. And this takes a close second. It's just difficult to put into words the disappointment. Yeah, especially because they played such a good match. And obviously in the first half, not so much. But then the, the thing is, I think Dalic figured it out at halftime. And the team figured it out at halftime. And in the second half, you know, until they got the goal, Croatia was quite dominant. Yeah, they largely survived in the first half. And, and, and that's maybe they were fortunate to not come out down. But I said this before the game, and you kept asking me, are you confident against Italy? And I, actually, I was, because this was a very Croatian performance. You knew that in the biggest moment, they'd step up. Yeah. They did. In the second half, they were the better team. Let's be honest. For, aside from a 15-minute period after they scored the goal, I thought where they were completely lost. Then yeah. Dalic makes the subs, changes the game, and they were mostly in control for the end. And the goal comes off really nothing. And then it's just a, a you know, the kind of a deflected ball in the middle that falls the Italian way and then it's a great finish yeah it was it was like I said uh, you know at that moment in time you saw Modric basically telling Dalic hey we need some subs because he saw that there yeah, was, was a control cool. and then the subs I think yeah that was a cool moment there's some very nice emotional moments for Croatian supporters and obviously this episode is very Croatia focused we're, we're well, very well versed with the team uh, you know you kind of saw a little bit of passing of the guard from Luka Modric to Meyer, and of course Meyer kind of was kind of reassuring, being like, "Okay, I'm gonna take the team forward." And of course, unfortunately, he wasn't able to to do that in the in the last moment. But it was just a broken play, frankly. And as soon as I saw the defenders backing away, I said, "Okay, this could be this could be a little bit of an issue at, at that." And then, of course, you got to credit the finish to you know to the Italian striker. Um, you know, no, it's an incredible, it was a great finish. finish. Yeah. A lot to do there. It's yeah. the perfect finish. Shapes it perfectly. He had way too much room at that point. But it's hard. At that point in the game, you're just trying to survive. It's the last minute of extra time. It, it, yeah. I don't think this was not Albania where the Croatians sat back and played it poorly in injured time. This was a game where they played well for the second half and they deserved a result. But that's yeah. the problem, right? When you leave it this late, in theory, this really comes down to the Albania game where if they just won that game, they would have been fine today. But that's not the way the Croatians do it, right? The Croatians yeah. always give you drama, always come up for the big moments. And I knew, I knew for this game that they would come up. 
that they would play. Yeah. They did play. And I don't know. It's just heartbreaking. But that's football, right? Yeah, where I was watching uh, amongst a lot of, you know, as Croatian fans and, in, 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 you know, there was a, was a big hall. And then, you know, it just, if you see the the first part of this video, you know, I put in the little clip of the Modric, you know, uh, celebration after the Modric goal. But then, you know, it was just silence after that. And there's nothing more you can say. I will say I thought eight minutes was a little bit much in this match. Like, I, yeah. I, I didn't see eight minutes of, I didn't see eight minutes of injury time. But it's a little bit of the Italian injury time right there with, <laughs> with eight minutes. But, yeah. Yeah. you know um yeah I, I it's hard to put into words hopefully modric you know hopefully modric continues to play in the nations league next year yeah. uh hopefully he doesn't retire after this because i think you know he deserves one more you know competition for with the croatia and i'm i'm hoping that that he decides to continue into that so yeah hopefully he does uh he can still play clearly uh, what a goal after yeah. missing the penalty. But if it is his last if it is his last go around, I think it's only apt that, that I take a moment to to say a little word about Luka Modric because he is without a doubt my favorite player because he represents to me everything that's good about this sport. The way he plays the game is with a sort of a quiet confidence and he's just a magician on the ball and he does everything right. Values possession to the degree earlier in his career that it was unthinkable how he could get out of tight spots, wriggle his way around. And he's not the guy who's going to take the glory. He's not the guy who's going to need to be on the end of the pass. He's the one making the pass. And in a sport yeah. full of personalities, full of egos, and that's fine. He's the opposite, right? He's the guy who's willing to make the extra pass. And that's oftentimes what get lo gets lost in, in this sport and, and people like that often don't get the credit they deserve. Luckily, he has gotten the credit and he's been the reason that I've loved watching Croatia for, for so long. So hats off. Thank you, Luca. Yeah. I mean, it's, if it's been a fantastic career for the Croatia shirt, like I said, hopefully he continues. I just want to finish uh, very quickly with one point, you know, obviously Spain, beat Albania in this particular match. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a, you know, one zero result to, uh, to the Spanish, um, you know, hats off to Albania. You know, they, they tried in this match, especially in the, in the last few minutes, they had a lot of chances to try to equalize, which would have not got them, uh, into, you know, the next round, obviously, but, but, uh, you know, it, I think overall Albanian fans should be happy with a solid tournament, you know, tying Croatia, scored first against Italy and like, you know, uh, had a, had a, despite absorbing a lot of early pressure, had a go at it against Spain. So yeah, credit I think to them. It's a good turn. yeah, credit to them. They, they, they couldn't have got drawn into a more difficult group and they did a lot well, right? In the end, it's a tight game against, yes, a Spanish a rotated Spanish squad, but it's a good performance, a great result for them against Croatia to come back the way they did. They have that big moment, right? That equalizer late. You, you can't, erase that moment you'll always have that moment as an albanian fan and and in the end it's it's a good experience it's a good tournament they played they played yeah yeah so all right moving forward now spain and italy get through you know weirdly there's some you know strange scenario where croatia is still not out yet but uh, you know we'll see how that goes but uh, for those of you out there enjoying these videos please go ahead and subscribe to the channel this is how football goes sometimes for all you Croatian fans out there. You know, um, it, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, Rahi and me will still keep supporting the team as, you know, one of our top few teams that we support. All right, Rahi, I, I'll leave it to you. Do you have anything more to say as we finish this episode? I'll end with a, a chant I heard Luca say after the World Cup, after they made the final. It's uh, Zovi, Samo Zovi. Sviče Sokolovi, zate živo dati. Keep flying.